Hello everybody and welcome to your 27th C Sharp XNA tutorial. So, uh, this tutorial we're going to be learning about pixel collision or pixel perfect collision, whichever one you like to call it. And we're going to be using, it's, it's going to be kind of, I don't know if I should call this hard or intermediate or whatever, but uh, to the average beginner, it might seem kind of confusing. It might kind of play with your mind a bit. Uh, but I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you to understand. And if you have to rewatch this video two or three times to fully grasp it, then so be it. It's, it's like in school when you're studying. You might not get something right away, but the more you look at it, the easier it gets in the end. Uh, so yeah, so I'm I'm telling you from now that if you don't understand it, don't worry, just keep working at it and you will understand it eventually. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be using the skills that we learned from the bounding box tutorial and we're going to be using that utilizing that with pixel collision. Uh pixel collision as I said before, it can be really hard on the hardware is because uh, if you're checking every single pixel of an image or every single pixel of, say you have like five enemies or whatever, or, or like say you have a hundred enemies and you're checking for pixel enemies of every single uh, enemy on the screen, and therefore you're going to have to check 800 pixel, 800, say your screen's 800 by 600, you're going to have to check like 800 by 600 pixels every single update. And that requires a lot from the hardware because still on your game it can give you a lot of lag. So, uh, using this method, what we're gonna do is first we're gonna check. For, first, we're gonna check for a bounding box collision, and then after we have a bounding box collision, then we're gonna check for a pixel perfect collision. So, if they're within the vicinity of the enemy or whatever they're trying to collide with, that's when you check for a pixel collision, and therefore, uh, it's easier uh, on the computer or on the hardware that you're running it on. Also, with the method I'm going to be showing you is that with the we're only going to be checking the area which where we're overlapping, where we're colliding with, and uh, you'll understand what I mean by the end of this tutorial. So remember, uh, sorry, our sprite. Okay, our sprite before. Uh, it was just a, a image that was just a, a just a square image that was filled in the color red, so there was no transparent areas. Okay, so say we did a bounding box collision, but for some reason, say uh, say our image was like that big, but say our like uh we cropped it out or our image was that big, but we only wanted to collide with what was only in the middle, so we only want to do that. Then uh, we would run into a problem because if we did bounding box collision then uh once once it hits this area the transparent area it would count as a collision but it really isn't a collision you want to uh, collide with this color right here or with any other type of color in there so what we need to do is that we need to check for bounding box collision so if it's in the vicinity of this sprite and then we have to check to see if this color is touching another color okay so i'm going to show you exactly how to do this so what we're gonna do is that we still have our rectangles, our our player and our enemy. Uh, sorry, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a private boolean type method called pixel collision. It's going to take our two textures and it's going to take uh, our two rectangles around our textures. Okay, so within this, what we need to do is that we need to get all the pixels within our texture. Okay, <coughs> sorry. Uh, what well, we need to get two, we need to get all the pixels within our within both of our textures, right? In order to store it to see uh, which color is in it. So basically, we need to scroll through all these pixels, and then we will notice that all these are transparent, and then it will get to store the red pixels, etc., etc. So that's what we have to do firstly. Okay. So once we do that, we do that by doing uh, making a color array, and we do new color and we make the color the size of the sprite width times the sprite height, right? <coughs> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> so we so we store our color data into our sprites width times our sprite height, and we make another color data based on our second sprite or our enemy sprite, uh, the width and the height as well. And then to store that data or that uh, that pixel data, what we do is we take our sprite name, we put dot get data, 
uh, right here in the left and right stream operators, we put what we're storing in there. So we're storing the color, and then we put in the data that we're storing in there. So we store our color data with it within our sprite. So that's that data is stored. Okay. So now this is the part where uh, it kind of can get confusing. Okay. So I have four integer types called top, bottom, left, and right. Okay. And what this is essentially, what this is all doing right here is going to draw a rectangle around the overlapping parts. So, w what am I saying right here? Okay, so, uh, let me, okay, go over here. Okay, so, s this is, say this is a player, and uh, this is the enemy over here, okay, in the black. So, let me draw a rectangle around the player. And okay, so say the player overlaps uh, the enemy like so. Oh, and I never got the whole thing. But basically, what we're basically doing is that we're getting a rectangle around the parts that is overlapping. So we'll we'll basically we're basically getting a rectangle from this corner to right here. So we only need to check for the pixels over here because that's the only part that's overlapping, right? We don't need to check for the pixels in the rest of the images because we know for a fact that the player is not touching that part of the image and therefore we don't need to get pixels or check for pixels in that area, right? And same for the player. This part of the player is not touching the enemy and therefore we don't need to check this area of the player for pixels. We only need to check the overlapping parts, the, hence the bounding box. We only have to check the overlapping parts to see, uh, to check within those uh, parts to see if it, it's actually a color or if it's transparent, right? So how do we do this, okay? So we do this by we say that the top or the top of our our new rectangle that we're going to draw is equal to math.max player.top or enemy.top okay so we don't uh, first of all we don't we don't know where to draw the rectangle so what we want to do is we want to find the maximum value between uh both of these now remember in X and A, uh, that uh, once you increase value, increase the Y value, you're going towards the bottom of the screen, and when you decrease the Y value, you're going towards the top of the screen. So we want to find uh, the 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 sprite or the image or the rectangle that is lower down on the screen, right? So for instance, when we go here, this this enemy sprite, the top the top of the enemy sprite. Is greater or uh, greater than the, the top of the player sprite. Therefore, we know that uh, the top of the enemy sprites is going to be the top of our new rectangle. Basically, that's what it's saying right there. So, if we go back to our code again, now we want to check to see the bottom of our new rectangle. So, we get the minimum value, the, the lowest number between these two of the player dot bottom and the enemy dot bottom. So, let let us go again. So let's check again. So so what's the lowest value? So uh, remember that Y towards the top of the screen is a lower value. So the player's bottom is lower than the enemy's bottom, right? Therefore, we know that the bottom of our new rectangle should be over here. So we got our top and we got our bottom of our new rectangle, okay? So if we go back to our code again, we need to check for the left hand, uh, left hand side of our new rectangle. So the left hand side is going to be the maximum value between the the uh, the player's left or the enemy's left. So if we go back to our image again, uh, the enemy's left, since it's uh, further to the right of the screen, then it is a, a higher value. So we need to start drawing our our left side from over here, right? And then for our right side, what we have to do is we find the minimum between the player's right and the enemy's right, okay? So what we do, uh, the player's right is less than the enemy's right, uh, according to the coordinate system. So we know to draw the right side panel right here. And the, voila, we got our new square and we know where the player and the enemy have overlapped, okay? So since so we got that information right there. So then all what we want to do is only scroll through the section that is overlap that's overlapping. We do this by uh, doing a for loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, for int y or whatever is equal to top. Okay, so we're starting from the top, and if y is less than bottom, um, then we we um we increase y, right? 
so therefore we're just scrolling from the top to the bottom right that's basically what we're doing so we don't want to go uh, any farther than that and this is just scrolling from the left to the right because that's what we're doing then basically what this is all saying is that we're, we're when we're scrolling to through each pixel this is going to scroll through every single pixel through the first sprite and it's just going to scroll through the uh, designated pixels on the in the second sprite. So remember our color data that we we stored, right? Uh, so yeah, we we stored that color data. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna say uh, if co color A is equal to now, uh, you're probably gonna have to memorize this. So but basically, what this is saying is that it's going to start from the top uh, pixel and it's gonna scroll through every single pixel from then on. So what this is doing, this formula is going to scroll through every pixel. So it's going to say get the current pixel, and we do this by think of this as like the the row width uh, times the row height, and then the column number. So if we're on uh, say we're on row zero, right? And say we we have it like if we're looking at it as an array, okay? So this is the first row. Say the row number is equal to zero. So and the, say there's like ten rows, right? Uh, so zero times like say th there's overlapping about like say 10 pixels so zero times 10 is equal to zero plus and say they're in the second col column right so zero plus two is equal to two so we need to get the pixel of the set the uh, row zero pick um, column two so that is basically uh, what we're basically doing right there so we get that information. It's it's like scrolling through a two-dimensional array, but we're doing this with one-dimensional arrays. So we're getting the corresponding pixels for the first image or for the first sprite and the, the second sprite. And what we're doing right here, there is four color values when we're working with colors in X and A. There's R, G, B, and A. Okay, R for red. Red intensity, green, uh, G for green intensity, B for blue intensity, and A stands for alpha. And what alpha means is, is the amount of transparency. Uh, zero stands for uh, maximum transparency, and 255 stands uh, for no transparency at all. Right? So what we do is that we get the A, we, to find the alpha, we, do, we get the color, and we do the color name dot A, right? And then we do the same for that, and we say if color um, the alpha if the alpha value is not equal to zero, so that means if the if the section is not transparent or the the pixel is not transparent um, in our player sprite, and if they're over if the overlapping part of the enemy is not uh, the alpha value is not equal to uh, the alpha value is not equal to uh, zero. Are, yeah therefore they are colliding so it's basically checking the the same it's checking the same pixel so it's saying if both of the pixels in both the enemy and the player image are have a color and they're not transparent therefore th the two pixels are colliding and therefore there's a collision and we return a collision by doing return true and then we uh, if there's no collision then we return false so how do we execute this in our update so in our update loop we do player if player intersects enemy then we run our collision code right so if pixel collision returns true then we we're going to change the player color else uh then it's, we're going to set the player color to y and if the player is not intersecting the enemy then we uh set the player's colors to white as well so uh, let us just run this program quickly to see what we get. So right now, uh, see, if we did bounding box collision, there would have been a collision already because of this bounding box, this area is so, um, so big, right? But right now, the pixel collision code is indeed running, right? And if I was to, like, have a, put a breakpoint in here, we would see that the pixel collision code is indeed running because the the player is intersecting the enemy. So the pixel collision code is running, but the two pixels aren't touching. Like none of these are touching yet. As soon as we touch it, then it will turn into a brownish color. And therefore, you will have a perfect collision every single time from every single angle. So that is it for this tutorial. I know it was long, but I hope you enjoyed this, and, and bye for now.